It's the force of gravity which holds the clouds around the Earth and the air in which they float. You can't touch air like a solid object. It's invisible and all-pervasive, so it's easy to forget that it has real substance. But it's only by exploiting the presence of air that seeds and insects, birds and man, are able to overcome gravity and float above the Earth's surface. All those creatures are gliders. Some of them can control, to some extent, the direction in which they glide, but none of them can climb in the air except with the help of rising air currents, like the breezes which come sweeping up these downs in southern England, carrying with them whole populations of seeds and spores and spiders. Once in the air, a whole new environment is open to them. Its wing is so shaped that as it sweeps round, it puts pressure on the air below and reduces pressure just above, so that the seed hangs in the air much longer than it would otherwise do. Sycamore seeds spin and glide in the same way. Long, narrow wings are the most efficient shape for uninterrupted gliding, and no bird glides better than the albatross. But such wings are difficult to flap sufficiently fast to give takeoff, so many species of albatross nest on the edge of cliffs where they can just fall into the air. Cliffs are much favored by gliders, for the wind from the sea striking the cliff face is deflected upwards and an albatross can hang on it. If it wants to fly a little slower and prevent itself from being swept away or carried too high by a sudden gust, it uses its tail and webbed feet as air brakes and reduces its lift by pulling in its wings, so making their surface smaller. With such techniques, an albatross will glide all day above a line of cliffs, traveling effortlessly along this highway in the sky. 